And good morning to you. It's Saturday the 8th of March 2014. Good morning, boys and girls. On this lovely day outside, the sun is beaming down. It it, it could be... Sp- I don't think it, we're classed as spring yet. Can someone look that up? Wendy, I know Wendy's with us today. Can you look up when spring is supposed to start? But as I've said on the last few shows, we have not had a winter here in the UK this year. Hasn't happened. We have not had a winter. We've we've kind of gone from autumn to sort of, shall we say, a cold autumn. And it stayed there. There was a couple, no more than three or four cold days for the whole of the winter this year. Is this global warming? Let's have some more of it. Come on. Let's have summer all year long, long here in the UK. I like the idea of that. Although, if you speak to our people in other countries uh, where they do have some rule like long, I think uh, some of the Middle Eastern countries and uh, certainly places like Australia and things like that, quite often they're glad to get out of it. I, I, I do sometimes wonder, these people that go on holiday to cold places to go skiing and all that business, no thank you, not for me, dear. I don't think so. Um, uh, a couple of you, uh, Wendy and... Good morning, Kevin. Now, I can't remember where you are, Kevin. Are you in... Manchester, was it Leeds? Kevin, Kevin, where are you? Oh, I can look up, can't I? One minute. I know where you all are. Don't you worry about that. There's a little, there's a bank of lights on the wall which tells me where. Ev- oh my God, is in Salford. What a dump that is. Jesus, you must take your life into your hands every time you go out the door there. I mean, I've mentioned Croydon a few times, but Salford. And don't come back to me with all the, oh, yeah, but the BBC are here. Oh, I bet, they're, I bet they wish I'd never gone there. That's a bloody dangerous place, isn't it, Salford? Oh, dear me. What, what time do you, do, do you make sure you've, you've got home and, you know, you've locked your door and all that, Kevin? <laughs> I am naughty. <coughs> so a couple of people have mentioned... Uh, that they like the new countdown clock that we've got that comes on sort of uh, three minutes uh, before before the show starts and it ticks down, tick, tick, tick. Of course, if you're watching the recorded version of the show, you won't see that, OK? The countdown clock, you'll have to, you'll have to go um, and watch us live on a sun- Saturday afternoon at 12 o'clock UK time. Uh, talking of live people, who is this on the line now, please? Calling in on live... Yes. 200. Kevin from Salford. Oh, my God, Kevin from Salford. I hope you're not using a mobile phone outside, are you? No, I'm not. I'm indoors, dear. <laughs> very, very dangerous. Very dangerous part of the world. My mate, he, um, he's on a radio station up there. Now, what's it called? Tameside Radio. Thameside? Tameside? I know, Tameside Tame- Radio, yeah. Tameside Radio. Wouldn't be Colin by any chance, would it? No, no, it's uh, James. James Dean. Oh, yes, I know James, yes. Yeah. Do you know him personally? Yeah. Uh, I have met him a couple of times. Yes, he's a friend of uh, a friend of mine's called Colin, who lives oh, right. in the same block I do. Colin, the um, Madame Mary's. That's the one. Yes, Madame Mary's, Phyllis the Sands on Blanky Blanky Wonky. See, I just know everyone. You know, I just usually oh. that you know this this is the time actually. Funny you should ring in, Kevin, and you got the call in first. But usually oh. these people are, are, are trying to ring in at this time, begging begging to be part of the show and I say I'm sorry you've got your own little show up there in Manchester dear you know you I know st- I know Thameside does have a very small um, a st- small reception area you, though you I think st- you have to stand outside with one yes. of those portables well. or something like that <laughs> you stick to your own little area you know while I'm busy doing this globally renowned talk show Global international superstar, yeah. yes. I am a bit worried, though, because you are in HD, and I wonder with your advancing years whether you should be. <laughs> I, I never actually know what, what, the, I, I, what, what, what it looks like at the other end. Uh, what happens, YouTube record this, OK? Mm-hmm. And I can back, play back to me what YouTube has recorded, and it never looks that good to me. Now, whether is that the recording... Is it the recording that doesn't look good, or is it, so, or, you know, now that you're watching live, is everything smooth and, and pin sharp and all that, or what? No, to be honest, no, it's a bit jerky, to it be quite jerky. honest. Okay. But then right. that's normally you anyway. you sort of like, you are not never been that smooth, have you, darling? Okay, but but well, yeah, no, I mean, it looks all right. I mean, you don't look bad, really, for 62. 62? That's in, <laughs> that's in 11 years, dear, 62. Well, it, it, feel, it feels like it. I've known you for far too many years. <laughs> I was just telling you about James. So one day, 
he was on his mobile. This is in Salford. He was on his mobile phone to me, uh, walking mm-hmm. down the road, and all of a sudden, I uh, give us your phone, and he's like, oh, "I'm I'm live on the radio. Give us your phone. Give us your phone, right?" And and the next thing there was a, there was a few seconds, <coughs> there was a few seconds um, gap, and um, next thing I know, hello, who's that? I said, "Hello, who's that?" Where the where where the Salford something or other, you've, he's just been mugged and put the phone down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have to say, it doesn't happen that often up here. There's a lot of people that say that Salford's sort of quite rough, but I mean, I've been living in Manchester now for eleven years, and I mean, I've been in Salford for four, and it, it's not really like that. Yeah, there's a few rough people around, but it's like that everywhere. I mean, you go to any part of London, and you've got sort of different little crews and bits like that but all in all it's really friendly up here i do like it up here and that's why i'm still here you because you lived in london up to what age oh um oh you're asking a question now i've moved around so many times i mean i know i know i know it's bit like it's over 11 years now since uh, i moved up here um but i mean i've lived all over london north south east and west and <coughs> all over the country as well with my uh, my ex partner's job so um and are yeah. you happiest now where you are now in manchester oh, yeah absolutely yeah the people are people are really friendly and it's a really great place to live and there's good bars and good clubs and uh yeah, it's great I, fun up here. I have been down that Canal Street only once. I found it a bit too... I don't know what the word would be. It didn't matter whatever bar you went in. They were all playing the same music, if you see what I mean. I, yeah, I yeah, that. I know what you mean. I mean, there are... I mean, I know in, in the past there's been a couple of occasions where you can walk down the Canal Street and it's the same music out of every single bar. Yeah. But certainly certainly in the last couple of years or so, there's been a number of changes and new bars have opened up, other bars have closed down and there's been changes around and there's there's much more diversity uh, to the bars as well. And there's also some that have opened up on the roads behind that and sort of around the corner from it as well, which, yes. is, which is great because it, it gives people... Um, a bigger choice and the advantage as well with canal street and that little area is is that everybody can con- con- congregate just to that one place yeah and you don't have to go traipsing across london or across the country to it you've got something for yeah. everybody yeah I see in that one mean. place i see what you mean there <laughs> I, I worked up there i did just just a, a charity do it was um about a year and a half two years ago something dela Ash, Ash, Ashdown, Ashdown de la something, Ashby. Mm. Oh, what that was it now? Doesn't ring any bells. I know the trams go there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they're, they're right, kind of build- okay. That oh. narrows it down a bit. What? Well, I can't remember what what it was now. Yeah. Place it oh, was. I'll, I'll have a look and find out. I'm sure. I'm sure there's an old poster with your name yeah. on it somewhere. An old, other. Probably an old Roman coin somewhere, dear. Fun you should say that. <laughs> <laughs> and this place, I must tell you, this place, um, while I was up there, and I was up there for two nights, and he put me in two different hotels. One was opposite a music shop, in the cent- a, a music shop selling pianos and drums and all that sort of thing, a big music shop in the centre yeah. of town. It was really posh hotel. I can't remember. What, would you know what that was called? Uh, I don't know. Was it Ashton Underline you went that's to? The, yes, yes. That's where I did the. Um, that's where I did the um, charity do. Right. I, I believe okay. the place yeah. is closed now, and it had an upstairs. We were upstairs in it. I was upstairs, so right. um, put me up in a hotel. And another hotel was was just around the corner, not too far away from uh, uh, the club. Right. And this was more like a like a like a posher travel lodge type, very modern. Right. You know, I'm standing there in the queue waiting to check in. Well, I mean, it was a Sunday. Was it a Sunday or a Monday? It was. A, I think it was a Sunday afternoon I was checking in. And I was only there for the one night. And honestly, I, I'm standing there in the queue. And I'm looking around. Well, it was like one big bloody knocking, knocking shop in there. It was all these young lads and young girls in there, you know, doled up to the eyeballs. Obviously checking in for just one night. I thought, what a sort of place am I in now, dear? Yeah, I know. Well, I used to it's I used outrageous. to have a hotel many many years ago in Wellingborough, right. and uh, me being exactly? young and naive at the time, I I had somebody come in with this 
very well pretty-ish looking woman wanted to know if uh, they could hire a room for a couple of hours so he could get changed and of course me being naive said oh no no we can't do that we only charge sort of like for overnight uh and uh yeah it was only when they left that uh, my partner turned around to me and said um you do realize that was a prostitute and he just wanted to go and get his end away <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's shocking. Shocking know, what goes on I in these hotels. I don't know anything I, about that, all these well, saunas and things like that. Well, I just go I, there for the ambience. I saw, I saw in a news story this week there's, that some of the hotels in America are now indeed charging by that you can rent a room for an hour or two. That's what some of yes. the hotels are doing now. Which, I mean, it's, it's fair enough, you know. It's business is business, isn't it? You know, take it a is, lunch yeah. across the sheets afterwards before I get an in. Thank you very much. Well, <laughs> tell me about it. It must cost a fortune for their laundry bill. I suppose they just go out the back and burn them, though, really. The cost of stuff in America oh, is cheap, dear. isn't it? Yeah. Is that, are, you, anyway, are you quite um, near that BBC place? Uh, yes, uh, that's in uh, Salford Keys, yes, Media City. I can see it from my window. Is it massive? Is it Because it looks really big on the telly. <clears throat> it, it is, it is massive. Yeah. Um, Granada are there as well, and there's a lot of uh, studios and recording studios and sound studios as well. It's really, um, it's really it's quite an amazing place. Um, and I know a few people around there, so I've actually been able to go around all of the studios and things like that and... Uh, yeah, it's it's quite an impressive setup there. Very, yeah. very good indeed. Oh, very I, good. I can only dream. You know, when I watch BBC News Twenty Four, and and you know at the beginning, and the camera goes across all these desks and things. I want an opening like that. I really yeah. want an opening like that, don't I? Actually, what <laughs> what you want to do is the same thing as me: is to be sitting at one of the desks, pulling faces as the camera pans across. <laughs> I, thought, I thought the Queen was going to do that. You remember when she walked in the back about a year ago? I thought she was yes. going to start pulling faces. <laughs> yes, yeah. The on, the only thing is that backdrop that they have on the BBC News, which has got. If you watch carefully, you can see the loop because the birds are just going across the back and then the same flock of birds goes again. Salford never looks like that. It hardly ever sun shines <laughs> over here. It's always cloudy. At the moment, it's a bit cloudy and miserable, which is why I didn't oh. Skype you because I just thought I'd be too depressing. Well, you um, you but it's dry. You don't sound too depressing to me. You have got a friend. Um, I say a friend. It's not someone that you know, but she says she lives in... She 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 used to live in... South, oh, no. She loves Salford, and I love Manchester. It's my home city. So there we no. are. Wendy. She used, to, she used to live in Manchester as oh, well. It is. It's really good. It's, it's a brilliant place, and despite the weather and it being raining a lot of the time up here, it's a really friendly place. And, um, it, I mean, yeah, just... It's, a, it's somewhere that everybody needs to sort of come and have a look at because Manchester doesn't get a, a good rap or didn't get a good rap for many, many years. But it really is becoming a place to come to now and uh, to visit. And the shopping's amazing and, and there's loads to do. Well, so, OK. Yeah. I mean, get your spare room ready. I'm on my way now. All oh, right, no, no problem. Will you actually be on? A, you'll actually be on a, um, the sofa. Yeah. And don't worry about the car. I've got locking wheel nuts. Marvellous. So I've got a secure <laughs> car park, so it's fine. Anyway, I'm going to pop off because you've got a show to do and we're just sitting here yapping away like old friends here. Oh, people, people, people like to listen to, to conversations. They like to listen to the different <laughs> accents across the world. They like to listen to my deep butch voice and your little pretty sort of <laughs> Tinkerbell twittering away there at the end of the phone to me. Twitter, Twitter, Tinkerbell, Twitter. Tinkerbell, how very dare you. <laughs> Cheerio, Kevin. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye now. Bye. There we are. Kevin, isn't that funny how you're talking about something and suddenly someone rings up who is actually there in Salford? Lovely place, friendly people. <laughs> You've yet, you see, <laughs> you still yet to convince me, to be honest, Kevin. I've, I've got to be honest to you. All right. Um, <clears throat> OK, just coming up to a quarter past 12. Uh, it's United Kingdom Talk. My name's Chris Reardon. You can call in if you want to. Uh, we have a Skype number. The Skype username is, all one word, Chris Reardon. C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. OK, that's the Skype username, Chris Reardon. C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Sorry, C H R I S R E A R D O, and that's my Skype username. There's a phone in number as well. It's a local London number. The local London number is 020 8133 Okay, 020 8133 Um, Nice people often put a message on the live YouTube 
wall thing. Um, and I just don't see it. I don't know. I, I, I can't find them, to be honest. I, I won't lie to you. But I seem to find them after the show is finished. I know a uh, uh, regular correspondent, Weird City Kid, often puts a message on that live YouTube thing. But I don't know how it works. And I don't see the messages until after the show. So the best way to do it is either, uh, either, either on a Skype, either on a phone call, or you can email into the show. I always see the emails, OK? The, but probably... Perhaps the best way to do it is to do the email if you're going to write anything. Uh, and my email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Um, who's on the line now? Good morning. Uh, oh, man. Uh, you realize what time it is over here? I had to get up at like the crack of butt crack in order to call your show live. I know who that voice is. Good morning, no, sir. Not. Uh, you think you do, but you may not, but anyhow. Oh. Good morning, Christopher. I, first of all, I have tons of thanks I have to give to you because through the years you've been very kind to me and my now passed away mother. You remember you recorded her a DVD and sent it to us so she could see and hear you singing happy birthday to her while you were punking away on your piano in the front room. Oh, that was a long, long time ago now, wasn't it? Tell us uh, who you are, sir, and where you are. I well, I, I, I was formerly... I'm I'm kind of like that famous rock and roll musician who was formerly known as uh, Prince. Uh, I was formerly known as a naughty moose. <laughs> <laughs> I know that voice. I know that voice. <laughs> well, you know, I, what are you calling yourself now then, a naughty moose? It depends on uh, who's looking for me and how hard. You know, so. <laughs> I, I, about, I have to go into the post office once a week and check the wall. <laughs> what about the IRS? If I'm the IRS, what's your name? Uh, I, I have a, an, an inside source there that alerts me whenever they're, you know. <laughs> uh, so anyhow, I, I, on Facebook, you have to look for the infamous moonshiner Irving D. Stiller. Irving D. Stiller now, okay. Well, you've always had that name, I think. you just used sort of several different ones, I think, to confuse most of us that are going on all the time. Actually, it's to keep some of the psychotic females who are trying to make hell out of my life. Oh, uh, you're still getting that at your age? Man, hey, you know. I, I mean, when, when, when does it all stop? You know, does it ever stop? They're throwing themselves at you, aren't they? I, it, it, it's a tough market in the United States for, <laughs> and, you know, if a woman is intelligent, a business professional or an executive, it's kind of hard for her to find a man who knows which implements to use at a formal dining table. Yes. Uh, how to dress. I love to put on a tuxedo and go out for like New Year's Eve and things like that. You know, that's that I, I follow a Oriental thing that was taught to me by my karate school instructor. He called it work versus reward. You promise yourself that if you do all the mundane tasks that have to be accomplished during the year, that when New Year's Eve comes around, you're going to get the hotel room, rent a limousine, and, and party your butts off. <laughs> and, uh, you still go out New Year's I, Eve? Um, I, I haven't been able to do one lately because I'm financially embarrassed. Right. Which, a polite way of saying I'm still trying to find a lonely, very wealthy, young, rich widow who will support me in the manner to which I want to become accustomed. Uh, I've thought... got to pay my club dues, you know, stuff like that. I uh, thought you was already in that, um, in, in that manner. I was until I moved back in with my mother and paid off all of her outstanding bills. All ah, right. <laughs> That'll shoot a hole in your retirement right there. Not to mention, remember the market crash? Yes, yes. That, uh, well, how long I... ago was that now? That's got to be um, six years? Yeah, well, all I know is that the uh, union that I belong to, because I, some of us in the broadcasting business were union members, some were not. Yes. Um, I was never accepted until recently into the ranks of AFTRA, the American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. Good God, really? <laughs> uh, uh, you see, I'm not. I'm not in anything like that. No one. No one's ever. No one's ever. No one's ever wanted me. So here I am in my little room, just doing this. <laughs> now, the union that I belonged to was a smaller thing that had more to do with uh, technicians. I'm also an engineer, yes. <laughs> which is a play way of saying that when things blew up, I was either there when it happened, or they called me to come and straighten things out. But anyhow. Yeah. Uh, our, our union's retirement <clears throat> funds went down the drain along with Bernie Madoff. He should hope that I never see him. 
Yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of companies here having trouble with their, their um, pension funds. Funnily enough, funnily you should, you should say that. I got, is it here? Just a minute. I don't think it's here now. Might have taken it downstairs to look at. <coughs> um, I think I've taken it downstairs. I've actually got my first ever um, letter from the British Telecom Pensions Fund, because I worked for British Telecom as a telephone engineer for 11 years. <clears throat> I said, well, not The whole of the 11 years wasn't telephone, I was an operator. Um, I didn't have qualifications at the time. So so you uh, in those days, you got into the company. You understand what I mean? You, you, uh, and once you'd got in, you could do anything. So I went in as a telephone operator, for which you didn't need many qualifications. And I eventually I transferred it to the uh, engineering. So I was there 11 years at British Telecom. And I've just got my first ever letter from them um, telling me that uh, they just wanted to check that they had my name and my address and my phone number should they need to contact me. Because it's not yet, you know, but that's my first ever um, letter from the pension people. So <laughs> it, it won't be much longer, I don't think. I, th I think they pay, I don't know what year they pay out, actually. I've got this private pension thing that pays out at 55 um, but quite frankly, the amount you get is <laughs> you, you, you kind of wonder if it's actually worth paying into it. Uh, how does yours work? Are, are you a private thing or what? I, <clears throat> I had a private thing and that was totally, completely decimated. Big fat zero. All, all I get is what we call social security. Right. Uh, which I paid into during, you know, all of my yes. working years. And then once you reach a certain age or have certain circumstances, uh, they they let me start collecting early because I was taking care of my mother and it was cheaper for them to pay me than it was to pay to put her in a home someplace. So yes, uh, <clears throat> but uh, the amount I get paid is uh, the better part of a joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, yeah, I mean my 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 private pension works out to at the moment. Are you ready for this? Two thousand one hundred pounds a year. And you, um, you kind of but, wonder if it's worth that. I mean, what is that? 2,100, that's about 50 quid a week, isn't it? 2,100 pound a year divided by yeah. 52 is 40 pounds a week. Of course, that would be... Oh, hang on, I've dropped my calculator. That would be... Uh, that would be on top of my state pension. I don't know if the fact that you've got a private pension, albeit very low, would affect your state pension. Do you see what I mean? Do, do they then say, well, hang on a minute, he's getting 40 quid from there, so you're, you're, you're going to get 40 quid less from us? I'm not sure if that, that's effective at all. Um, a lot depends on your, your, what you called it, state pension. Yes. Um, the more you earn during the course of your career, the more you will get each month out of the state pension, or is that how it's set up, or is it just a flat rate? Uh, it's just a, a flat rate for everyone in the country, the, sta the, the state pension from the government. Mm. And, and that's changing soon as well. That that that's all changing soon as well. I think everyone's going to get something like a um, hundred and forty. I think it's a hundred and forty pounds a week. You know, so mind mm. you, you know, <coughs> with the other forty quid, that would be what one hundred and eighty pounds a week. And, and those those are kind of index links, so they do go up as the years go by. You know. <coughs> Yeah, so uh, slightly different to you, but um, the uh, the private pension I've got was supposed to go up every year, and the idea was you build up this money, and at the end of the term you get this lump sum to pay off your house, and you have money as well. Well, I paid off my house every time I had a little bit more money, I shoved it onto the mortgage, kept kept paying off the house, but and then I paid for it. So then I looked at the pension and I thought, well. You know, it's pointless. You know, why? Well, I'm, I won't need all that money now because I, I don't desire loads and loads of money. You know, I have no interest at all in being. What is the point of that? Being rich. Uh, uh, I'll tell you what the point of that is. What is? Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Come on, man. The, the one who dies with the most with the most toys wins. I mean, come on. I mean, <laughs> you know, that, that top studio you've I've got there. Got, I've got all the toys. I'm, I'm happy coming in here. Turning on uh, my little lights and things. I'm, I've got everything. That's it. I've got, what I else got to I get need? my butt over there and show you how it's done in the real world. <laughs> I, mean, I, I can understand why they decided to make you an engineer at the, at the <laughs> telephone company because you. I think you had a natural talent for 
climbing poles. And that's all I'm going to say. I'm, I've, <laughs> you, she left that door wide open, and I just stepped right in. And that reminds me, have you got a small hammer in your studio? Uh, you, really, not, you need it right now. Not around me, no, not around me yet. Well, what's, what's falling I down? Swear, the clock behind you on the wall yes. is either turning anti-clockwise or the, the hands haven't moved in, like, the last, I don't know, 20-some-odd minutes. I'm, I'm watching... I know you've got that pendulum swinging back and forth yeah. to hypnotize your audience, <laughs> so, they, so they don't notice the fact that they're burning a precious minutes of their life that they're never going to get back again. <laughs> it's fantastic to talk to you, Anonymous. Okay, well, anyhow, no, you 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 need to keep, you know you need to have all sorts of money piled up because I mean you must have spent I, I was doing the math while you took your uh, nephew across the pond to come visit us yeah and uh that was not exactly an inexpensive junket no so, no you, you've got some tin cans buried in the backyard someplace i know that <laughs> uh, one thing anyhow. one thing i like to do is spend money on the children and, and and see their faces that 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 holiday to to florida i keep saying this that was the best holiday i've ever had having to make sure someone else had a good time and and he did, and funnily enough, there, there were so many funny things that that happened on that holiday. And last night, on the way home from work, um, I, I was just chuckling in the car all the way home at some of the things he would say to me and do. Uh, absolutely hilarious, hilarious. Yeah, I think it's probably <clears throat> genetic. And you know, one, yeah. one of these days, your sister's going to slap you up the side of the head and go, "Will you stop <laughs> teaching that kid all that stuff?" He wants to go. He, he's he's mentioned that he'd like to go to L.A. So um, that that that's possible. L.A. I mean, I said, do, "Would you like to go to Israel and do the Jesus thing?" He had no, no interest in that at all. I'm afraid, um, but he wants to go to L.A. So so I might do that. I don't know. You think your traffic in the U.K. is bad? Yeah. Take the kid and get stuck out there on the five or one of those places. You know, you you, you want to make sure that you've got survival supplies with you because you might not move for I don't know a week. You know, what in the uh, in the traffic? Yeah, it's unbelievable. You know, forget it. I mean, I I I had a friend who left the East Coast where I am that I taught radio engineering, and he went to the West Coast and tried to talk me into joining yeah. him out there because, to quote him. He had rented his apartment, rented his furniture, and if I wanted to, I could rent a woman too. So you know, he's like, "Get out of here!" <laughs> uh, he retired the money. <laughs> from three different companies at the same time, so he had three different retirements to draw from, and he had a, a rather comfortable retirement. But uh, <clears throat> one one last thing, and then I'll let you go, because I know your audience is probably going, "Who is this guy? Get him!" <laughs> uh, this you said you didn't get any winter? No, not really, not at all. No winter uh, here. We've not yeah, had well, it, and we're, we're almost out of it now. Um, uh, today, indeed, today they're looking at... Um, I, I, you're in Fahrenheit, aren't you? And then today they're looking at about 60 or 61 out there. It should only be about 50, 50 this time of year. Is it, is we have the, gone through three Arctic vortexes over here. I, I know I'm, you have. I know you I, have. When I was in Florida in January, okay, it didn't get freezing cold, but there was a couple of days that we had to wrap up warm, and even w when I went to see the Barry Manilow concert, he came on the stage on that cold day and he said, hello, everyone. You know, he talks, what's happened to the weather in Florida? And it, it was cold. Oh, you poor baby. While you were suffering down there, the temperature up here, 200 miles north and west of New York City, right along the Pennsylvania border, was a whopping, make you sweat under your armpits, minus 30 Celsius. You should have come and joined us. Did, did you go out in that? I mean... Yes. I earned my extra money by helping the retired people keep their sidewalks and their driveways clear and stuff like that. I've got special extreme cold weather service clothing I bought from an army surplus store. Yeah. I'm good to like minus 50. So the only thing, and you would only have a gap where your eyes are, presumably, is everything else got some sort of wrapping over it, is it? Oh, yeah, you have to, otherwise yeah. you're, in, you're in trouble in just yeah. a few minutes. And you also have to protect your eyes with goggles. Gosh. What happens to your eyes in that sort of way? Do they, do they literally freeze over? Uh, they could. It's it's not it's not good. And the other thing you really have to watch is the air that you're breathing because once it gets down below zero, um, you can actually do damage to your bronchial tube sucking in that cold air. So you, I I use a 
a ski mask, and I also have a scarf that I wrap around so that it filters the air on its way in. And that's all you need? Is it like a scarf in between your, your air and, and your mouth sort of thing? Yeah, but you will generate moisture in the material on the scarf as you're breathing freeze, in and yeah, out, and that mean. freezes up, mm, so you have to mm, rotate mm. the scarf or chain. You know, I carry extras well, or what. Rather you than me, mate. I know a lot of Americans who, who, who experience that. Rather you than me. <laughs> okay, well, it's, it's been good talking with you. So, uh, I, by the way, you have yet to exchange details with me on Skype. Oh, have I really? Have you have you applied? Have you have you clicked a thing? Where is that then? Uh, let's see. Have you done an ad uh, thing? I haven't got a. Don't think I've got a thing here. What's that recent? I've got... I, I think my Skype thing will say voice over artist. Um, because I, I have, you'll enjoy this one. I, I actually got paid a lot of money when I was very, can, can you imagine at the age of 21, they had me recording commercials for a woman's lingerie company? <laughs> you have no idea what it was like in that recording studio. Let me add you then, hang on a minute, I'll put you on the ads then, then you can, because you, you've used your phone, haven't you? Blimey. Search Skype directly. I'm, I'm paying so. for this call. I'm not a cheap <laughs> SOB like some people that I know. So I, voice I actually, over artist, you said, did you? Yes, it, it'll, it'll, it should say voiceover <coughs> artists. Well, I've got four. Um, voiceover artist, all one word. Is that you? No, I got, I got, I've got voice space over space artist. Are you white top? VA. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. One that, minute. That's 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 where Irving Distillers from is White Top, Virginia. He's right, he's so. located just a few feet away from the North Carolina Virginia <coughs> Tennessee border. So in, in case the feds come chasing him, he can you know just take a few steps one direction or the other and, and get out of the jurisdiction. Well, there we are. How did you on the Skype system, sir? Well, I'm I wow. Oh, that reminds me. Very very last thing. Yeah. I opened up my cupboard door to put some dishes away, and there it is up on the shelf at eye level, staring at me. On one side it says United Kingdom oh, Talk no. Radio. <laughs> what? Tell tell them what the other side says. It was one of the old mugs that we used to send out, and there's a picture of me on, isn't it? Uh, oh, Bingay! Sure Bingay! You've got a yeah. Bingay mug, haven't you? I had to be very careful with my right-wing Baptist mother to make yeah. certain that the... <laughs> to keep it round the other way when she comes round. <laughs> uh, so, anyhow, I, I just wanted to let you know that that's, that's still there. So. Wow. Let me just tell people that we... I, I, I did some... I've done little things over the years mouse mats and mugs and things like that and Irvin's got one of the uh, one of the old United Kingdom talking Bingay mugs Bingay was like a version of bingo that I used to do uh, in London we had quite a lot of fun with that actually bingo it was a lot of lot of work that was that that little night and, and no one used to help I gave up eventually it was just uh, uh, too much work for one person but um, yeah, it was good bingo we had do you remember the Argentinians that used to ring in and they actually turned up once to bingo <laughs> And yeah, gonna, what? And what a kettle or a toaster? I think they want a toaster. Right. I I happen to to have a very accomplished singing voice. I've actually been paid to do some tours during the summertime. Yeah. I've worked with Ronnie Millsap and Ron, and uh, Tammy Wynette. Oh, the summer I spent working with that lady. Stand years, by yeah. your man. I don't, yeah. I know why her ex husband was an alcoholic? Yeah. He had every reason in the world to be, I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, and uh, Ronnie Millsap, great, tremendous talent. Can He'd go for days without writing anything, mm. and all of a sudden he'd sit down at his keyboard, and he would just like Gosh. start turning out songs. And uh, my voice when I'm singing sounds a lot like Roger Whittaker mm. or uh, Jim Reeves. Oh, I like Roger. I like both of those. Uh, uh, stand by your What man. genre uh, I'm singing. Sorry, I, I'd, um, love, I'd love to, this is what I intend on doing to you, some night it? without you knowing it. When I finally managed to get over there, Durham Town, going, Durham Town. I'm going, I'm going to invade one of your karaoke shows. Come along anytime you want. You'll be first on. And uh, no, I, I want it to be a surprise. You won't know who it is. I'm, all right, know, okay. The audience will just be doing their thing, and all of a sudden, this strange person will, you know, I'll probably by that time, I'll be using a walker. I'm sure you're not strange. I'm sure you're not strange. We don't believe you. Huh. <laughs> you never heard any of my old BBC World Service shows, did you? This is London. Uh, I used to, I used to pop up on there once in a while with a gentleman whose last name was Peel. Yeah. Uh, tremendous talent. Yeah, he's not here anymore. Yeah. Oh uh, no, he 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 left for the cosmos. Yeah. Yeah. So anyhow, love uh, to you meet you someday. Would love to meet you someday. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah. Go on, get off. I'll see you later. Thanks for calling in. Uh, goodbye. Bye-bye. Uh, I promise I'll leave you alone for... Yeah, don't, don't leave it for three years next time, please. Uh, question. When, when do your clocks go back? Because ours Ooh. go back tonight. Well, 2 o'clock tomorrow morning. Soon. Can't tell you the exact time. Um, I'll look that up. You're just a ball of information, aren't you? I well, just... no, I didn't expect anyone. You know, it's not a quiz night, is it? Is it a quiz night? UK clocks <sighs> go back. Right, hang on. You're a worse so, typer tonight. Are. No, we got no, we got no two two fingers, two fingers on the type board. Um, Sunday, March the thirtieth. So we still got another couple of weeks to go yet. Okay, well, there's at least one thing I can do for you before I leave. Yes. Um, you're listening to United Talk Radio with the esteemed Chris Reardon. It's United Kingdom Talk. You got it uh, wrong there. You know, you got it wrong there. Uh, United okay, wait, Kingdom. Okay. There is a UK Talk Radio. Don't confuse us. I was first. You're listening to United Kingdom Talk Radio with your esteemed host, Chris Reardon. Are we not going to get a burp at the end? Uh, no. <laughs> it's the usual amount of money. Just put it in my numbered Swiss bank account. <laughs> Will do. Much. Thank you, sir. See you soon. Don't Goodbye. leave it for three years. Ta-da now. Um, um, we'll, we'll see what happens. I, mm. you know. <laughs> there we are. There's Mr. Anonymous in America calling in today. How fantastic is that? I love it. It's people calling. I haven't spoken to him for about... Oof, it, do you know, the last time it was... It was actually a Christmas sometimes that he rang in. It was a Christmas show. I think possibly a Christmas Eve or something like that that he rang in. And that must be... Actually, it's, I think it's about five years ago, actually. We, 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 ex we exchange messages sometimes on the thing there. Uh, some messages coming in, boys and girls. Uh, hello to Ronan, who says, Enjoying the show, a uh, great show today so far. Would call up, but got to go to work at 12.45. Oh, you poor thing. What time do you finish? What do you do, Ronan? I don't even know what you do. Do let us know what you do, Ronan. Uh, good morning to Marge, who says, I'm watching you at 336k stream. Well, I don't know what that is, Marge. I just push a button and it works. That's it. Don't understand these numbers. Video, you get 9 out of 10 and audio, 10 out of 10. Not jerky at all. And uh, she says, hi to Anonymous. I thought the same thing about the clock hypnotising us. What do you want me? I can stop. Is the pendulum annoying you? Hey, those of you that are just listening can't obviously can't see it. But there is a pendulum that swings backwards and forwards. Backwards and forwards. Backwards and... Is it annoying you? I could stop the pendulum if you want me to. It's no problem at all. Let me know if you want that to happen, all right? Uh, good morning to Ben Parker in London. He says, um, it's next year. What, what's I don't, next year pension age? Well, I'm 51 now, Ben. Pension age isn't 52, is it? You're confusing me. He says, oh, by the way, are you working tonight, Ben? Because I'm in Hammersmith tonight, if you'd like to pop down. Might be nice to see your little face. And your friend who, who are quite, um, is quite entertaining. They're little... The little big lad. What's, what's it? Pete. Is it Peter? I think it's Peter his name. Uh, ben says a standard state pension in this country, in the UK, is not affected if you claim pension credit to top up. They take off pound for pound what you get in private pension. OK, so. So what you're saying is that if I am, if I become a pensioner and I claim just my pension, nothing else. Like, as in housing benefit and all that. Well, I don't need any of that. Housing benefit, I'm lucky enough. I've worked over the years, don't need all that. So if, I was to, if I'm being paid pension, OK, by the government, and I have my small but valuable private pension, right, that is not affected by the small private pension as long as I'm not claiming for anything else. So I, I, I hope that I won't have to claim, because you never know what's going to happen, do you? You know. You, you never know what's going to happen, so I hope... Um, that won't affect me. <clears throat> he says, uh, I look nice in a harness. I haven't got a harness on. What a strange thing to say. I've never worn. Why would I want a harness on? I'm not a horse. <laughs> Do I look like a horse? <laughs> oh, fantastic. Um, ben might be popping down tonight. I'll be there with Peter. Yeah, he's a nice lad, Peter. Always, um... Always has a little chat with me, young Peter, doesn't he? Let's let's do these uh, um, messages. Marge says the clock is actually not annoying her. I'm pleased to hear that, Marge. 
She's not being annoyed by the clock. Ronan is currently at college. Um, I think you're 18, aren't you? But during the weekend, he works at a fast food outlet, which is called McDonald's. Cannot wait to leave. Just earns me some extra cash. My shift is 2 p.m. till 10 p.m. Oh, that's good. Great that you've got a job, Ronan. Ronan, I know some people um, will probably take the mick out of you working at McDonald's, right? I would say to you, take no notice of them at all. You have a job. And I've said this before to many, many young people who, uh, pro- um, who, who have jobs but are not doing the job that they want to do yet. All right? I'm extremely proud of the fact that you get up off your ass and you go and do a job. Never, ever, let, if anyone ever says to you, oh, he works at McDonald's or, you know, oh, he works in a sweet shop. Or, oh, she delivers papers. Any of that, you know, just tell them where, just stick two fingers up at them. You know, tell them where to go, right? You have got a job. You are earning money. Fantastic. That's what I wanted to say to you there, all right? Uh, All that long shift there, two till ten. Do you get free McDonald's? Oh, no, I couldn't be working with all those dead animals, I'm afraid. (laughs) You know what I mean, I'm a vegetarian. The slightest, slightest chance I get to, 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 to try and forward the vegetarians all over the world, I do use it. And I'm not going to come and work at McDonald's only because, only because it's all dead animals. I think you should have, they should have a vegetarian McDonald's. <clears throat> you know, I mean, possibly deep fried lettuce or something like that you could do, couldn't you? If I came in, they do do a veggie burger in McDonald's, which I act, to be honest, I'm not too keen on that. I go in there, what do I go, I do... I, I like in McDonald's the tea. The tea's always a good standard. And when you do them, mozzarella sticks. Oh, my God, I'd die for those. I could die for a mozzarella stick at the moment, but I'm on a diet. So I can't have anything like that at the moment. Nothing like that at all. Uh, thank you, Ronan. Let's have a look at here. Uh, morning, Wendy. Wendy, Sunday, March the 30th, yes, is indeed uh, the time that... Um, uh, the clocks go back here in the UK. Good morning, Terry. Morning, Terry, up in Leeds. Um, he likes the countdown clock and he likes uh, Irvin on the phone. Irvin Distiller, Anonymous. He's got so many different names, so good morning to you as well. And hello to Mark E. Sorry, Mark. Good morning, Mark, who's just adding me as a contact. Morning, Mark. Mark is actually not far from here in Chertsey, which is a quite a well, well-to-do area, you know, Chertsey. Oh, yes. Very nice place. I don't think I could afford to live in Chertsey. Oh, you must be very posh, Mark. Now, let's just pick up on these other messages here. Oh, there we are. Um, <clears throat> oh, Mark also used to live in Salford. Well, that's a big step up, isn't it, eh? Salford to Chertsey. That is a big step. I'm very impressed, Mark. Very impressed. Uh and Mark also used to work for the Department of Work and Pensions. He said pension credit replaces what they take off you. However, they still take 7%. It's all very complicated, isn't it? It's all take, 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 Mark. Take, take, take. By the way, Mark, bad news, I'm afraid. The, the karaoke is no longer at the Black Cap on Sundays, OK? The moment I have Sundays off, anyone want to take me out? Where can we go Sunday night, please? Someone please take me out Sunday night. I'll have to go on one of those dating... Well, I am on a few dating sites, to be honest, Mark. You know, I've got this thing on my iPhone. I can't remember what it's called, but it's kind of a yellow yellow background on there, a little dating thing. And I logged on to there, I think, in 2012. I'm still waiting for my first message. You know, I mean, maybe I'm using the wrong photo or something like that. You know, I, I'm still waiting for my first message, to be honest, Mark. Um, <laughs> Terry was concerned that I hadn't said hello to him yet. Hello, Terry. Come here. Come here. Is that better now? I hope so. Mark says it's not a, it's not posh. It's a house shirt. Listen, if you live it, hey, you can't say that. If you're living in Chertsey, that's posh. There are no poor areas of Chertsey. You're posh. Believe it. Might be a house share, but you are in a posh place. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Chertsey under Thames. Did, were you near the floods at all, Ben says? Eh? Oh, the clocks are going forward, not backwards, sorry. But they're going forward for us on the 30th of March. 
all right um Let's have a look here. Oh, there's Mark's. Mark's message are appearing all over the place. Is that because I didn't get to you so quickly? Sorry, Mark. Sometimes it takes a little little while to um, uh, get get to the messages. Okay. And Ben, of course, hosts a karaoke on Sunday nights at, at Ladbrook Grove. Oh my God, that's a dodgy area. Which part of Ladbrook Grove are you, though, Ben? That's the thing. Because there's one end of the road is good. And the other end's not so good, is it? I do know these things. I mean, will the wheels... I've got locking wheel nuts. But, you know, will the mirrors still be on my car? That's the worry. That That is the worry, isn't it? Eh? Poor old Mark was two foot underwater last week, Chertsey. Not where he is, I suppose. Oh, you're not... You haven't got the basement room, have you? Oh, my God. You'll need a water alarm there, young man. A water alarm. Are you with someone in there or are you living on your own? I know you, you share ours. Are you, are you, have you got a partner or are you on your own there? Huh? Two foot under the water. Um, all right. I must tell you, I did a good turn this week. I'm very pleased. And God above paid me back. Now, for three weeks, I've been looking for some headphones. I bought these headphones. Hang on, I've got the box up here. Lovely box. But I bought these headphones a couple of weeks ago uh, for my DJ because I bought a lovely pair of headphones from uh, the States. Uh, what are they called now? Not Bosch. Bose. I bought a lovely pair of white headphones from the States, Bose, to replace a pair that I'd lost. Now, around Christmas... Uh, no, not around Christmas time. About six weeks ago... I remember walking up to Ron's house, because he doesn't live far from me, uh, my best mate. And I had a pair of these Bose headphones on. And I walked up there playing the music. And on the way back, it was raining, OK? So I remember putting the headphones in my pocket and putting an umbrella up. And I thought, well, I won't put those on. They might get wet. I haven't seen them since then. They were a black pair. and They were Bose ones. I got those from Vegas a couple of years ago. Fantastic quality. Really good sound. Um, and I think a couple of days passed and I thought, right, well, I'm going to walk up there now. I can't, cannot find them anywhere. I think they must have dropped out of my pocket somewhere on the way back. Although I'm surprised I didn't hear it. I wouldn't be surprised if they're in the house somewhere. I cannot find these Bose headphones. So when I went to Florida with my nephew, Jimmy, I bought another pair there, a white pair, exactly the same model, Bose headphones. And they're really good quality. Now, I have been taking them around to work with me. Um, to do uh, monitoring when I'm when I'm doing some DJing, uh, but I thought oh, these are too good to be taking to work. So I went to uh, H we got HMV now in uh, Reading, and I bought a pair of these in there. Lovely box, um, Tinchney Strider headphones. Uh, it, uh, the, the box is is is, is fantastic. Reasonably good quality headphones. They sound all right. The only thing I would say, I don't like the wire. The wire is a straight wire. It's not a curly wire at all. And you can't really um, stretch it. Do you see what I mean? So I'm not keen on the wire. I don't know why they've done that. You know, for a DJ headphones, not to have a curly wire is a bit stupid. But they weren't that expensive at 40 quid. Anyway, so I've been using those for a while. And then I went to look in the car and I thought, well, I can't find these headphones anywhere. Now, it was about three weeks ago. I thought, well, I must have left them at one of my places at work. You know, and <laughs> hopefully they will still be there. Anyway, I've been to and from my places of work two or three times now. And, of course, I haven't been able to find them. I searched the car high and low for these headphones. Well, they must have fallen down somewhere. Couldn't find them anywhere. Oh, well, I'll have to, you know, I'll have to, you know, I'll, I'll use my Bose ones. I've been taking out those Bose ones. Well, Thursday night, Thursday night I was at work. I was DJing at this place in Clapham, the two brewers. And um, I, uh, there, there were two, two, there were three, there were three, boys in there who kept coming up and asking for requests and once they start doing that then you get to know them and it's quite nice to talk to them I said well where, where do you live then he said oh down the upper Richmond Road I said well you can have a lift home if you want 
He said, really? I said, yes. I go right past Upper Richmond. Well, I drive on Upper Richmond Road, the, virtually the entire length of Upper Richmond Road from uh, Clapham. To, where does it run from now? From from Wandsworth right down to Richmond, the, the entire length I drive. I said, no, I don't mind giving the three of you. Oh, thanks very much. Right, so that was that. And uh, I got in the car and I had left the two back seats down, right? Uh, for when I do my karaoke, I have to carry around all sorts of equipment and that. So I put these two seats back up. Um, lo and behold, underneath the seats were my headphones. So there you are. You see, you do someone a good turn. And the Lord will reward you, boys and girls. Thank you very much for finding my headphones. I'm quite pleased about that. Um, more DJ. I'm going to tell you in a minute what I, some of the things I've got up to as a DJ over the years. Now, this is going to be our secret. You mustn't tell anyone about this. Whether you're watching this show live, and it's, to, it's coming up to nine minutes to one on Saturday, the 8th of March, 2000. And 14, if you're with us live or watching a recording of the show on YouTube, this has to be our secrets. Don't tell anyone what I'm going to tell you, what I used to get up to as a DJ, all right? Because I might not get any more work if they hear all this. Irvin says, Chris, I used to think that I was cheap until I listened to your shows. <laughs> Believe me, I am, you know, I should open my own pound shop. This show shouldn't be called United Kingdom. It should be called The Pound Show, I reckon. Mark says uh, he's on his own but live with a family. All oh, right, I didn't know that, Mark. I didn't know that. We're on your own. Never mind. You're not too far away from me now, you know. We can always have a cup of tea and a Starbucks near you if you want. I don't mind jumping in the car, having a quick meeting. But no cakes because I am on a diet at the moment, Mark. I've already lost three pounds this week. Yes. Tell you about that after the DJ story. OK, good. It's nice to have you along anyway, Mark. It really is. Um, ben says, is the red light going to go on when you reveal all? Uh, now, I never said I would reveal all, Ben, did I? You don't know half the stories, Ben. And I'm not about to tell those on here, just the clean ones. Or, the you know, those, those that are below the line. Um... <clears throat> Mark, Marge says she worked at McDonald's for three years. Oh, right, OK. She says diets don't work. You're on a good eating regime. What's with the bus now you have in the background? Oh, the bus? Oh, it's not a bus. This is a biscuit tin. You know, I usually like to put something different behind me every time. And, you know, Marge notices every single time when there's something new behind me. This is a biscuit tin, a London bus biscuit tin. It's good, isn't it? Hey, eh? there's no biscuits inside. They've all gone. Always a few crumbs. Oh, I'd love to eat those crumbs, but I cannot have anything like that at the moment. We are on a diet. And that's it. Thank you. I just noticed I have the same shirt you're wearing. Oh, do you? This is, what's this? Uh, just a various different colours. Those of you just listening, I've got a, a shirt, blue, green, purple colour. Quite a nice shirt. I've got a few different shirts in that cupboard. All right, now, shall I do some more, any more messages before I start telling you this? Mark, thank you for the, for the kiss. Do you want another one? Do you want one of those long ones? Yeah. There you go. Little kiss for you, Mark, all right? <laughs> Wendy says, I love the biscuit tin. Do you like it, Wendy? That was a present for my sister at Christmas. It was full of biscuits. It was, was actually full of biscuits. There we are. Um, ben says, I remember I know some of the people you have worked with and they like to tattle. Oh, do they? There are some stories, but I cannot tell you. So DJing, boys and girls. I've been DJing for quite a number of years now. OK. 33 years. How old are you, Mark? <laughs> I've been Ronan is 18 I've been DJing for 33 years okay um, and it's it's been a, a a good job I'm very very don't don't get me wrong I know how lucky I am I really do you, you'll come across some DJs and they're so far up their own asses it's unbelievable they really are like, oh, I'm this I'm that oh, I'm good there's one bloke so I'm not going to tell you his name there's one bloke who, who I know 
I haven't spoken to him for a few years now. And um, I logged on. I saw he had a website. So I logged on to this website. And it says, hello, I am so-and-so. And I am a DJ. And I'm good. Damn good. Book me. And I, I can't think of anything else that would put you off someone than to coming out with something like that. People who constantly tell you how good they are, I find a complete turn-off. The, the whole self-promotion thing. Do you know what I mean? Now, I know that on Facebook, whenever I'm doing another job, maybe it be karaoke or a DJ or a quiz night, one of those things, or, or this show, right? I will always be on there, uh, you know, tonight I'm doing this, tomorrow I'm doing this, this afternoon we're doing this, you know, next week I will be here doing this, right? But I don't go on there and say, come along to the best karaoke with the best karaoke host, me, I've done this, I've done that, you know, oh Christ, I, that is a complete turn off for me. I just, take a step back for Christ's sake, you know? A lot of the younger people are on that Facebook and Twitter and all that business telling us all how good they are. Now, if someone else was telling me how good they are, I might take notice of that. But when you're on there all the time, often with exactly the same paragraph... It just gets under your ner on your nerves. You know, I personally have never felt that I'm particularly good at anything I do, but I do it. You know, and if it's been a good night, you get in the car at the end of the night, you kind of smile to yourself as you go home. I've never really felt particularly good at anything I do. I certainly, even if I did feel like that, I wouldn't be on here telling you all Oh, 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 you've got to come to my karaoke now. I'm the best karaoke host in the world, you know. It's fantastic. Good God, no. There's far better people and singers. You know, I think a karaoke person needs to be able to sing to a certain level. I, I, I would class myself as a lower karaoke singer. I can probably hold the notes roughly in the right order at the right time. But again, I've seen karaoke people. Ben's a karaoke person, and he'll know... Ex I'm obviously not referring to you, Ben. But Ben's a karaoke guy. He's the guy who's been... Um, uh, 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 the chap who's been talking, sending the messages today. And he's not one of these people. I've seen karaoke nights where the karaoke person, the KJ, karaoke jockey, OK, KJ, um, is constantly pushing themselves forward in front of the customers. You know, so... You might have two customers sing, and then the KJ will sing. Two customers, the KJ, Kuja, and they think they're some sort of bloody star. And that's not the way to do it. I don't think so, anyway. They haven't come to see me sing. You've come to sing. You've come to be a star. And I will do as much as I can to make you a star for those three or four minutes that you're singing. I will work the sound as best I can. If you're screaming into the microphone, I'm going to turn you down. Because it's painful. It's actually painful, especially if you sing the wrong notes. But I'll never tell you you're singing the wrong notes. Never. I wouldn't do that. Why ruin your night? So what? You can't sing. Doesn't matter. You came up and had a go. That's your star part of the night. Whether you can sing or not, it's not up to me to tell you you can sing or not. That's up to you. Yeah? So... That's, that's how I feel about this self-promotion thing. Anyway, this DJing, let's see if... Um, oh, we've got a phone call coming in here. Good morning. Who's on line 5,768,000? You wish. <laughs> Chris, it's Mike from Newcastle. Hello, Mike from Newcastle. How are you? I'm all right, dear. It's how are you doing? Busy old day on the phone today. I've, do you know, I've got a stack of bits of paper here to do the show. Right? Have you? And I haven't got through any of it. I haven't even got to the, to the DJ bit yet. I can't believe it. Well, I've just been <laughs> watching, and I just want to pick up on what you've been saying about um, people being up their own arses and stuff. And I've just started a new job, right? I started um, about a month ago. And I work for a company, and there's, 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 there's always 
somebody in a company who is, oh, you know, I've done this, I've done that, and this guy is one of those people. Oh, yeah. He comes, he comes over, he takes work off us, because um, in the job I do, it's quite demanding and, you know, things like that. So he, so he comes over and, you know, offers to help us um, out every day. Now, when he comes over and he's taking work off us, it's quite annoying because um, mm. what we have to do is we have to record whatever we do. So if I do so many direct debits per day, I've got to write that down, how many I've done, how long it took, it, um, yes. how long it took me to do that, blah, blah, blah. But he comes over and, uh, you know, he goes, oh, I've done this many letters, I've done this many, you know, direct debits or whatever, and it oh, gets on yeah. my bloody nerves. Yeah, 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 yeah. Self, you know, I call it self-promotion. Self-promotion. Yep. And <clears throat> the biggest stomping ground, Chris, for this is when you see Facebook pages related to radio as well. Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, all the time. All the time. But what, what's all that about? You know, the constant mm-hmm. self-promotion and telling everyone how good you are. I don't exactly. think it does anything for you at all, telling people that. I really don't. I don't do it myself. I mean, I don't self-promote. I mean, I try to... There's, there's a difference between self-promotion and putting yourself out there. Yeah. And I just put myself out there. Look, you know, I'm my cat and I can yes. do this and do that. Yes. But I don't claim to be, you know, fabulous at anything. I'm, yeah. I'm You know, that's, I can that's, do certain things, I think... but I don't claim to be sort of like the next best... You know, Chris Miles or Scott mm, Mills or whatever. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That's I'm, what I I'm, do. I'm that's what I do. I, I use the Facebook to put myself out there. And yeah. that's about it. Some people have said uh, over the years, people have said, well, you don't push yourself far. Well, I can't. You know, I think some people can do that. Some people can't. And that might, might be why I'm just sitting here in my room rather than doing something else. But that's just the way it is. And I accept that. And, you know, I think also, um, how old are you now, Mike? I'm coming up 36. Oh, still a little boy. I think as you get older... <laughs> You you kind of think oh no I just do it like this so, you know you, you you lose some sort of um, when you're pushing to get something you you lose that mm-hmm. but for some reason you lose that but um, yeah yeah uh, yeah I mean I know what you mean it's it's just I mean it really winds me up at work and stuff and but I'm 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 still the new boy so I can't say anything and that really winds me up too because yeah. I want to look. No, no don't rock the boat yet, mate. Don't rock it yet. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> what is it you do um, again? Sorry. Um, I work for a company called WorldPay. Right. Oh, yes, I know them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they, um, they do the they internet money, the don't they? Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. So I'm, I, I'm on a fixed contract now for 12 months. So it's coming up me third, third month now. And uh, it's a really great job. I absolutely love it. It's a great I'm glad job. Glad you love it. Isn't it nice to have? Because you were unemployed for how long? A long time, wasn't it? Uh, two years. Two years. Isn't it lovely to have your own money again? Oh, it's it, it's absolutely great. I mean, I bought myself a new guitar. I bought myself new clothes and stuff. And it's just it's just great to have something at the end of the month. Yeah, fantastic. You know, just to pay the bills off with and get myself out of debt. You know, that's great. But, uh, it's you know it's really worth it. And you know, as a bonus, my job's absolutely brilliant. So. You know, absolutely fantastic. Well, I'm glad to hear it, Mark. Good luck to you, Mike. All right. Right. Okay, Chris. I just thought I'd um, phone up and just you know have a rant. Always <laughs> a pleasure to have a chin wag. All right, Chris. Take care. Bye bye now. Cheerio, Thanks. Mark. Bye now. Mike in uh, Newcastle. Up even. We're going further and further north as the show goes on today. Um, Mark in uh, Chertsey says, uh, "K." Yeah, I know you mean a karaoke person. I can't, I'm not saying his name. A karaoke person that thinks he's a star, like you said, is at, and he mentions a pub. And his name is, and he mentions his name. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> Other people have said that. Apparently, apparently, Kevin, this person upset his or her, <laughs> his or her core karaoke members. And, um,. They never went back again. I, I, I was told that the other one of them comes to my nights, and I was told he he quite ups, he, he upset his um, regulars. Ben, I might tell you later. If you turn up, I might tell you. Okay, you can come straight up to me and say, "Oh, is that right?" <laughs> Good morning to Shania on the Isle of Wight, who joins us a bit late today. Shania, you're lucky we're still here. 
It's been a busy old show so far. Shania says, hello, Chris. I'm very late. I've been busy this morning. Hope you're OK. All is well, Shania. Now, what was it I saw you on last week? Weren't you? Ah, yes, your exams. How did the exams go, Shania? Shania's 16? All 16? 17? One of those. She's, she's, she's just had some exams last week, I gather. And um, so there we are. Ben says, uh, you're nearly out of time. I'm not out, actually out of time, Ben. I mean, I could sit here for four hours. But I don't think people would stay for four hours. I do get statistics. And generally, people stay for about ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they log in and out. Since we started uh, advertising the show, um, if, if you're interested, um, we are getting a lot more viewers for the long show. It's like you know, a couple of thousand now. Um, where do you think the top place people watch is? What country? Mexico. So hello, Mexico. Mexico, in this order, these are the top countries that, that watch this show. Mexico, United Kingdom, Russia, Brazil, Colombia, Argentina, Ukraine, Turkey, Romania, United States, Taiwan, Philippines, Egypt, Indonesia, Peru, Chile, and the list goes on. Now, the average time of people watching the show varies enormously from five seconds, right, which is, I think, the lowest. Let me find which country watches the longest. I can't remember. I think can't remember it was. See, average... You can't really go by these average times. Oh, I'm, I can't... T are there, is that the one there? Is Barbados. How weird is that? People watch the longest if they're in Barbados. Weird, 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 weird. Right. Um, oh, Shania. No, there were only those mocks. She's 17. I got a C and I didn't even prepare for it. Oh, I shouldn't worry too much about those silly old exams, Shania. All I got was two O-levels. Physics, C, and English, C. I got no other qualifications. I hated it. I hated it. Sitting in that great big hall, writing these bits down from questions that I didn't really understand. And in it, bad, I tell you what's the worst thing, Shania, when you're in an exam and you look at the paper and you don't really get any of it. And then you look at the clock and there's another three hours to go. Oh, it's just dreadful. And do you know what, do you know what subject was the worst one for me? You ready for this? Religion. R.E. I just had no idea. I turned this paper over and I looked at it and I thought, oh my God, I don't get any of it. And I looked at the clock and it was three hours. And you've got to sit there for three... You can't go early. You've got to sit there for three hours writing this old codswallop down. Awful. Awful. Don't you worry too much, Shania. If you do all right, fine. If you don't, then that's it. All right? So, going back to my DJing stuff. Over the years... I've done some very strange things, perhaps naughty things that I shouldn't have done. And I made a little list while I was sitting there having lunch yesterday. One of the things, um, one of the papers, one of the uh, gay magazines annually run a DJ of the Year awards thing. Oh, just a minute, I'll get it for you. One minute. Oh, no, I haven't. No, it's not there. I know, well, I moved it, haven't I? I said, I've got a couple of certificates. And I won this. I won this about five years running on the trot. DJ of the Year Award. This is in the uh, mid to late 90s. DJ of the Year, Chris Reardon. And what would happen is that the magazine would have this form within it. And you'd fill it out, you know, your favourite... DJ, your favourite singer, your favourite um, artist, your favourite bar, your favourite part of London, all this was all to do with uh, the sort of gay world, right, that we, that, 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 that I was exclusively working, don't work exclusively in gay places now, but at the time. And this award, you filled out these forms and you'd send it in. What I did, all those, oh, I've got another phone call now, we're never going to get on with this, are we? Hello, who's that on line 75? 
Is it just going to be music? Oh, we haven't got time to listen to music. And, um... What, I, I would... I would get these magazines. There'd be stacks of these magazines. And I'd cut out the voting form. Right? Now, at the time, I had some very, very busy nights. And people would be constant because I was a lot prettier than I am now. Do you know what I mean? They were lining up. You know what I mean? They, they were lining up to be noticed. Not now. It's all finished. But at the time, it yeah, wasn't too bad looking. So I would cut out all these forms. And I would take them with me, with envelopes and stamps, to the DJ box, wherever I was working. And every single person that came up... Oh, Chris, could you play this? Yeah, of course I can. Oh, do you mind filling out that wire there? Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, that, that's the DJ bit there. J just in case you were... And they would laugh and go away. And I said, bring it back and I'll, I'll send it off. Because, you know, you don't want to leave anything to chance. Right? <laughs> so they'd, they'd fill it out and bring it back to me. Because, you know, if you gave them an envelope and a bit of paper, they'd probably fill it out and they'd probably leave it so they forget. No. So the next time they come up for a request, oh, Chris, could you play it? Yeah, OK. Did you do that form? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's here. And they'd bring it up and I'd make them fill out the, 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 the envelope as well. So it's not in my handwriting, you see. Right? So you've got the envelope and you've got the form. Put the form in the envelope, put the stamp on, in the post box it went. Now, I, I'd even thought of the fact... Now, if I'm putting all these envelopes in the same post office box, it's going to look a bit dodgy, isn't it? I mean, I, I just assume the people in the office at this particular magazine you know, would look at the envelope. Oh, that's funny. That's, that's from Putney. The, these are all from the same letterbox. So I would then go and drive home using different routes, posting these forms in different letterboxes. And that's how I won. <laughs> Five years on the trot. <laughs> and do you know what you actually win? Shall I tell you what you win? A certificate. That's all you ever got. A certificate and a couple of photos in the paper. A couple of days later, people have forgotten who ever won in the first place. And that's how I won. Was that cheating? Did I fill out the forms myself? Absolutely not. No, none of them. Did I, did I give people a help in voting for me? Well, yeah, maybe so. And that's how I won that award. So that's, that's one little secret. Now, they still do these awards. I have absolutely no interest in them at all because I know they can be fiddled. They can be fiddled. You've got people on Facebook begging you to vote. Oh, the awards are up. Please, please vote for me. Oh, it's pathetic. It is pathetic. I don't think, and I, will, I would not go on Facebook or Twitter and beg, literally beg people to vote for me. Abs what for? For a certificate? You don't, let me tell you, you don't get any more work. You don't get any more money. You, there's, there's nothing, you get a certificate. That's it. It's a complete and utter waste of time. The awards things at this particular magazine. I'm not even going to mention the magazine because I think it's a waste of time. Complete and utter waste of time. So that's how I won those awards, just in case you were working, wondering. You know? No one can come back to me and say to me in a few years' time, oh, yeah, you won all those awards by fiddling. I've just told you how I won them. I've just told you. No bones to me. Don't bother me. <laughs> I'm certainly not going to have people... I'm not going to be begging... Begging, begging people to vote for me. Um, about 18 years ago, I was working at uh, the Black Cap in Camden. A different story for you now. Right? And there was a drag act called Regina Fong. Now, the DJ for this night was a very, very good friend of mine, David Rosen who no longer DJs, he's he become a minicab driver now. He's uh, on his way to begin, begin, he's about 56 years old now. And he was off this particular night, it was a Tuesday night, I always remember. And the stand-in was Simon Holloway. 
Simon was there on Sundays um, and had never worked with Regina Fong. Regina Fong was like big, big drag queen, you know, quite a, a popular person on, on, on the scene. And <laughs> for a laugh, I came in this the pub on my on, on a night off on a Tuesday night and it was packed. I couldn't quite get to the stage. And I saw Simon was DJ and Regina was on. The fuse box for all the electrics. It's, I can't believe there's someone at the door. Who's going to be at the door now? Can you hang on a second? I, I'll just see who that is. Won't Sorry about that. <laughs> That's the council. They want to know if I want to sign up for their get rewarded for recycling scheme, honestly. On a Saturday. They're coming up on a Saturday. Can you believe that? Anyway, so where was I? Yes, the fuse box for all the electrics was at the end of the bar. And Regina Fong was on the stage and Simon was DJing. And I know... He was nervous <coughs> about, about this particular night. So the drag act is directly in front of my mate Simon, who's on the stage. OK? So there she is at the front. He's at the back working all the buttons. So I went to this fuse box and I started flicking the lights on and off. So, so she'd be talking, the, the drag act, and I'd switch off. And I'd switch on again, only for a couple of seconds. And they, what's going on here? What, what's going on? It was hilarious. And Simon's looking around, looking really confused. What, what's happening here? He's looking at all his buttons and all that. She, she's gone, are you stepping on a wire or something behind there? And he's shaking his head, going, no, it's not me. Of course, I'm at the bar killing myself laughing. <laughs> he doesn't know. He never found out that was me. <laughs> Going back even further, a place I worked in Earl's Court called Harpo's. Young DJ E&T. I was like the, the main DJ at this particular place. I did about four or five nights a week in there. And on Saturdays, I would finish an hour early so I could finish that job and go on to another one, which was a reflex in Putney. Now, to be able to do that, I had to get another DJ... Um, to do the hour that I wasn't there. And Ian wanted to be a DJ. He'd, he'd, he'd only just kind of started. And I'd, <laughs> I did this every week in the end. What I would do, we were on records at the time. And I'd be playing the record. And I, I'm like, you ready, Ian? He said, yeah, yeah, I'll be ready in a minute. OK, then. So he'd then have his record in his hand, because there were two record players. He'd put a record on. I said, you ready, Ian? He said, yeah, in a, I won't be a second now. I said, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to hand you an over now to Ian T. And I'd stop the music. And he'd like, oh, I'm, I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready. <laughs> and then I'd pull off my record. I said, right, I've got to go. See ya. And it would be complete silence for about 10 seconds. <laughs> Which, the, the, to be honest, you know, the crowd weren't worried. He was terrified. And he got to the point where, he, why do you do this every week to me? <laughs> <laughs> you see, at the time, it's hilarious. When you, if you could see this happening, it's absolutely hilarious. I've had singers on there that I know, and I've slowed down the music while they're singing. That's always quite funny. 
You just slow it down because these CD players have got like a key um, lock, right? So if you slow down or speed up the music, the key remains the same. And I used to slow down and speed up the music to various different singers, and they weren't quite sure what they couldn't work it out because the key was remaining the same. They thought, well, he can't be speeding it up, it must be them. <laughs> they thought they were losing their heads. <laughs> I've pulled out I've pulled out the jack plug on the microphone on really bad loud karaoke singers and the funny thing is they don't even notice they don't even notice if I've got a sort of a, if I'm working with a manager with a sense of humor and to be honest <laughs> they're few and far between managers with senses of humor but certainly Vicky I worked with for years and years. Uh, uh, and I'm very, very sad. She's about to leave one of the places that I work in. I shall miss her dreadfully, Vicky. But um, she's looked at me and she's gone, who is this thing? And I said, it's all right. And I pulled the plug out. And she there you go, look. <laughs> I don't even notice. <laughs> really, really bad singers. Um, I've... <laughs> I've worked in... Um, a place where there was another DJ and like someone's been chatting me up and it's gone on for a while and I thought, oh, you know, and I've pulled the other DJ in. I said, yeah, can you put a record on for a second? And he said, yes, you know, I jump in now. I said, come out here. I've gone for a snog around the back. <laughs> come back 10 minutes later. No one noticed. <laughs> I've left outside the back door. As I say, I'm going back a few years when I was a little bit more younger and better looking. But there were times where I might have been chatting up three or four people in one night. In the worry that you're going to lose out one of them. <clears throat> and it's got towards the end of the night, maybe 10 minutes to go. You suddenly realise that there are three or four people waiting for you to finish. I thought, what am I going to do now? I've gone to the manager. I said, can you open the back door? I'm going to have to go out the back door. And they're like, why? I said, I've been chatting up three or four people. They're all waiting for me now. I've got to go out the back door. I've done that before. Several times. <laughs> Not now, sadly. Christ, I'm lucky to get chatted up once a year now. It all stops eventually, you know. Um, and one more little thing I think one more little thing because I think we're out of time now we've been here for so long now <clears throat> oh, I've got a couple of emails to read out here we, 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 well sir I've um, there was one particular time where I was the resident on a Saturday night somewhere and there was a reasonably new manager there who I didn't get on with and it was a bank holiday possibly Easter bank holiday and he wanted to bring in another DJ for the last two hours of my night. So I was doing 10 to 12. He wanted someone to do 12 to 2 or 12 to 3. Can't remember what it was now. But there we are. So, all oh right, okay then. You know, so I agreed to it. Uh, oh, we won't, no, it, 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 I wasn't asked, I was told. Okay, won't be needing you after 12 o'clock on so and so because, oh, right, okay. And I'd been there a few years. I was quite, I'm quite put out by this. So I know the other DJ would have played what we call hard music. Hard, you know, bang, 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 bang. Me, I played more pop music. Although I could play the harder stuff as well, right? And it got to about half 11 and I thought, right, I'm not going to make this easy for you. So what I did was I started playing all pop music for the last half hour and it was like Kylie Minogue sure Madonna y you get the general griff, drift so and it wasn't the other DJ's fault at all it wasn't his fault at all and I, 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 it got to 12 o'clock and it made it extremely difficult for him to take over from me because you know you want a slow thing uh, how can I explain this okay so say if you're driving a car right if 
you get to 60 mile an hour. Obviously, you can't do this. If you get to 60 mile an hour and then you change drivers who also drives at 60 mile an hour, you won't notice the change, will you? Right? But I, I was playing at 40 mile an hour. The next DJ took over. He would be playing at 90 mile an hour. So, of course, there was this big change in between the both of us. And it killed the night stone dead. 12 o'clock came and said, thanks very much, mate. I'll see you later. And he started bang, bang, bang. Well, of course, the floor cleared. I had a full dance floor that night. <laughs> the floor cleared. They went to either sides of the room and I left. So I didn't stay any longer. But then people started ringing me up. Said, Why have you gone home early? I said, well, they wanted someone else to take over. But it's awful. Now, the, the other DJ, who, I, who I'd never met before and never met again, right? he was not a bad DJ. But you've got to be in the right place. Yeah, It's no good putting me in to do a proper reggae set or, or, or a rock set, something like that. I couldn't do that. I do um, all sorts of music in one night. But I don't specialise. He specialises in hard music. That's not what we did on a Saturday night. He was completely the wrong person in the wrong place. And I didn't help because I'd started playing all this pop music and made it very difficult for him. So, And that's one of the other things I've done. So there we are. There are a few little stories for you. Not going to tell you the other ones. I know you're waiting for some sort of filth, aren't you? You're not getting any filth out of me, I'm afraid. Thank you very much. Certainly not. Um, Wendy says... Uh, Chris, you're not going to extend the time now. You're getting more listeners. An hour is not long enough. Carry on. It's funny. Giggling away here. They're all true, though. They're, none of those stories are made up. I, I, there are so many more to tell you, but I don't think you want to hear the other ones. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. I know Brandon, young Brandon, watches the show. He wants, he wants, he wants the feel. For, you're not getting it, Brandon. I'm sorry you're not getting it. Besides, I'm too old to be doing all that now, dear. It's not offered anymore, that's why. Um, right, let's have a look. Ben says, um, I was once told if you bask in the afterglow, no one else can see it. He's talking about people that constantly, you know, big themselves up. Yeah, absolutely, Ben. I think it's just awful when they, they big themselves up like that. <coughs> Marge says we should recycle because it's the right thing to do. Well, I do. I do recycle. I don't need a little card to tell me, you know, what, what's this for? How do I get my... What rewards? Oh, you can get these rewards now for recycling. I don't need reward. reward. I'll put, I'll throw that away. I do recycle anyway. Everything's recycled. Um, Marge wants a mug and kisses. There aren't any mugs left, I'm afraid, Marge. They all went ages ago. Ages and ages ago. No, Wendy, I'm not telling you the other bits and pieces. Absolutely not. Irvin says, gone for a snog out the back. What a tomcat. I was very naughty. Very, very naughty. <laughs> we like to have a little bit of a kiss. Hello to Mark. He says, did you keep the certificates? Show us on the next show. Well, they are... let me see. if. Let me just have a quick look in the cupboard. I'll see if I can find it or not. There might be one in here. <clears throat> one minute. That one there. Oh. <clears throat> right, I've got one. There's one in, I thought there was one in the cupboard. Here's one here. All right. QS, QX, excellent award, best pub DJ, Chris Reard, 1995, that one, all right? So that's one of them. But that's all you get, a blooming certificate. What's the point? What's the point? You know, let's see some cash. Come on, let's see some cash. Or a bit more work. Oh, can't, can't get comfortable now. I'll probably, actually, you know, I've probably got a few more jobs uh, uh, from it. Hello, Shania, who says... Um, she had the problem with her exams of not knowing anything about anything with the subject citizenship. Well, that's a new one for me. I never heard of that one. Citizenship. What is that? I didn't have a clue how to answer the questions and got, got an, an A, all guessing. 
got an A star with the coursework and so she got an A star just by guessing the answers. That's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> Some uh, messages. Hello to Ivona in Slovakia. Oh, you're the one in Slovakia watching. I did wonder who it was watching in Slovakia. Hello, Ivona. She's been with us quite a long time. Oh, Christ, that's Ronnie now. Ronnie's ringing now. Just a minute. He's on the FaceTime as well. Yeah, we're, we're just doing a show at the moment. We're still on air, Ron. Really? How long have you been on air? There he is, little Ron. Oh, they can all see you now. On the iPhone. Give a little wave. Is my best friend Ron on the iPhone. Look at that. Say hello. Look, he's still in bed, you lazy person. I am, yes. How lazy are you? Honestly, it's terrible. Right, I shall be ringing you in about 15 minutes. Okay, how long have you been on air? Hour and a half. Those poor, poor people. What do you mean? <laughs> oh, their ears must be bleeding. Thank you. What? <laughs> what do you mean? Oh. I haven't... Fin Look at all these bits of paper. I haven't got through any of these. It's been a very uh, busy morning. Very you busy. just can't That's accept it, can you, that we have uh, millions I've, of people either, watching either this? Either those four Five people's ears must be bleeding or they're all asleep. Go away. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. You get no support from a best mate at all. Absolutely no support from him. All right, so hello to Ivona. Um, yeah, it's quite a... Sh Shania likes a certificate. Yeah, it's quite a, a gold thing there. And, and uh, I've got loads of them somewhere. I can't, I can't remember where they are now. I took them down off the wall eventually. When I thought, you know, what a like, waste of time that was. As, as I say, you, you, you win these by getting loads of people to fill in forms. <laughs> you know, what's the point? Uh, hello to Taylor. Hello, Taylor, who just listens to the show. She listens to the show. Um, I'm sorry, Taylor, I'm assuming you're a she. Is that a boy's name or a girl's name, Taylor? I'm not quite sure. Hi, Chris. I listen to your show in the mornings at 5.30 a.m. Eastern Time in the U.S. while I prepare my daughter's lunch for school. Um, photo of one of her lunches below. And it does... Oh, I must say, that does look very nice, the lunch. Sends in a photo. It's black and white, actually. I've got a black and white... Let me see if I've got a colour photo on the uh, system. One minute. I might have... Let's see if I can do that. Colour photo. Oh. Uh... Because it looks a very nice lunch that she's been doing her daughter. Uh, where are we? Is it that one? Might be that. How's that? She's, she's done her daughter a lunch. Um, looking very nice. Photo of one of the lunches below. She's four. And the attached lunch photo includes a vegan cream cheese sandwich with a strawberry bow and dairy-free chocolate chip eyes, broccoli with carrot, um, with carrot number. Can you see that, that she's done, like, numbers with a carrot? She's made numbers out of a carrot. That's clever. I like that. <clears throat> Uh, strawberry soy yoghurt with sprinkles, crackers and watermelon bites. We don't eat meat or dairy either. No, uh, I, I, I'm trying. I, I eat very, very little dairy. I've tried other cheeses. I've not found a cheese that I like yet, to be honest. Um, but I'm certainly going towards this vegan thing. In fact, I've now got a vegan recipe book. And tomorrow, Sunday, on my day off, I'm going to try. And, um, if I've got time, I'm going to try and make something out of that vegan um, uh, uh, recipe book it does say diary book recipe book so I'm going to try and make something out of that tomorrow but uh, yes obviously no meat at all I don't, eat, I don't believe in eating dead animals at all um, Taylor says I also listen when in traffic and sometimes at work during lunchtime since you always make the day better with your stories, news and guests so I'm glad, glad, you're, glad you're with us Taylor I download your podcast from iTunes Onto my iPhone and iPad, and I've been listening on various Apple devices since about 2007. So I'm a long-time listener. Yeah, you've been around a long time. Wow. 2007. That's, 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 um, thank you. Thank you for being with us all that time. So when did we start? 
14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. So I think we started in 2006, didn't we? By the way, boys and girls, you know, if 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 you rather just listen to the show, maybe on your iPod or, you know, something like that, you can download the show completely for free by subscribing to iTunes. At iTunes, uh, just type in United Kingdom Talk on the podcast section and you'll find the audio downloads there. Hit the subscribe and you'll get the new one whenever it comes out. OK, <clears throat> I love your show and we'll listen for you uh, to you as long as you make them. Thank you. Well, I, I hope to be around for a long time. I hope so. You know, touch wood. Touchwood, a little bit of a, a medical problem at the moment, but um, I, I haven't got time to tell you now because we've uh, chatted for so long today. Also, I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina, but am originally from Chicago, Illinois. The uh, Ill, oh, oh, I've been corrected, Illinois. The S is silent. I've always called it Illinois. You've probably heard me do that, haven't you? So you're correcting me there. That's, I don't mind that at all. Uh, if um, Chicago, Illinois. Have a great day and thanks so much for all of your shows. As you might say, I love it. We all love it. I love sitting here chatting. <laughs> Ronnie doesn't like me chatting. He's a miserable git. He really is sometimes. Um, oh, the picture's still up there, isn't it? Sorry. I've left that picture on there. One minute. <laughs> it's a good job you're there, Wendy. Correcting me as I go through. Thank you, Wendy. I forgot that was up completely. Um, Mark says, I agree and so much for not revealing the trashy mag. I would imagine you're worth more than that these days. I don't think so. I'm not worth anything, Mark. I'm just an ordinary bloke comes in here and sits down and chats over rubbish. And uh, voiceover artist says, tell Ron that bleeding ears are no problem. All Chris's listeners keep tampons happy to shove in their ears. Oh, I don't like that word, tampon. I really don't. Um, good morning to Craig, who sends in a, an email to the show. Hello, Chris. <coughs> Craig here from Hinkley in Leicestershire. I really liked your house tour videos on YouTube this week. And please keep these short daily videos coming. Yes, uh, at the moment I'm doing short daily videos, boys and girls. These are, you can find those by going to my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. They are all there, okay? All of them, all right? Uh, YouTube.com <coughs> forward slash Chris Reardon UK. You can also subscribe to that if you want to get a daily one. Uh, they're, they're all different. Some are comical, some are newsy, some are personal. Different one every day. And they're generally about two or three minutes long, although this week's ones have been a bit longer. I showed you a little bit of a tour of the house over the whole week. We're going to do the garden on uh, Monday, I think. Uh, Craig says, the we do you know, I've just realised my throat's better. I, I, I will tell you now, um, as I've just noticed that. I, it is, isn't it? So I've had to go to the doctor this week because I've had this ongoing throat problem. There's, if I put my hand, just actually it's not up as much now. That's definitely gone down. I, uh, if you're a regular uh, listener of you to the show, you know I went to the doctor and I had a scan because they, they, they thought there was something growing on, on my thyroid gland. But the scan showed nothing at all, completely normal. However, I still have this slight feeling when I'm swallowing. Um, at one point it felt like there was a lump on there. It doesn't feel like that anymore, but it still doesn't feel quite right when I'm swallowing. So I left it. I went on holiday, come back. We're still doing it. I've left it. And I went back to the doctor on Wednesday. And she's now given me, was it, a sh it was he. He's now given me some antibiotics. OK. And I started taking those on Wednesday, which is, uh, that has upset my stomach. But I know it's the antibiotics. Um... And I've just realised it's better. <clears throat> My voice is not rasping so much. So, so I think that, I'm uh, hoping that's, that's, that's going to sort it out. He's also going to book me in for an appointment at the hospital for ear, nose and throat to see if there's anything wrong there. So uh, that's it. I thought, sorry, I thought I wasn't going to go on to that now because of the time. Uh, but as I just noticed, I thought I'd mention that. Yeah. Anyway, Craig says, um, the weather is nice here in Hinkley. This week... In our town sees our 40 odd year council building pulled down and replaced by a second leisure centre in our small park area called Argent's Mead. 
where the cars where are the cars going to park oh is it is it is it a bit of a problem is there not enough car parking it's a total waste of money and the noise it will increase we have a bit of a regeneration going on here in Hinkley. There's a lot of places having that done at the moment. A bus station is being redone and a new cinema in that area. It's cost so far £80 million, pounds, plus it's supposed to be a newer shopping area with homes as well. Well, you know, that's the thing, isn't it? They've got to build all the time these new homes. I've been watching a very, very interesting programme on the television about planning I think it's on BBC Two, <clears throat> one night a week. I can't remember. Um, uh, I can't remember what what day it's actually on, but uh, uh, it, it is very interesting about planning. People wanting to build houses and then houses and then people uh, objecting to it and all that business. It's a really good show. I was going to talk about it today, but you know we haven't had time. Now there's a really good singer which is based here in our area in Leicestershire, Matthew Ford. He's a really good big band singer. I like big band. I like big band. He's a lovely chap. He's got some videos <coughs> on the internet. Take a look. Good show today. And that's from Craig A. Craig, if you've got any um, uh, videos, perhaps any YouTube uh, clips of that, uh, I'd be happy to have a look at those if you want to send them in. All right. Got to say hello to Ian. Ian. Ian Cognito. Ian Cognito? Is, is that a little joke? Ian Cognito? I don't know. Hello to radio show host, who says, Hello, Chris. Best have bought you a game today. Anonymous is lurking in the shadows. Oh, yeah, that's who you spoke to us earlier, isn't it? There we are. And there's Mark's messages. I don't like to leave anything out. Um, I'll quickly, quickly have a look to see if we've not left anything out. I don't like to leave anything out. March says, take acidopolis, a natural substance for your stomach. The antibiotics kill out the good bacteria in the stomach. Yeah, but they might have, that might affect with the antibiotics, Marge. You know, you're not supposed to take too many um, things at the same time, are you? I don't think so, anyway. All right. Uh, Wayne has sent in a picture of him in a tuxedo. Ah, oh, but I can't show it now. Sorry, Wayne, I can't get that up there now because we've kind of run out of spaces on the thing. Uh, no, can't get up there up now, I'll show. There we are. So I think that's it for today, boys and girls. Oh, Terry says he used to work at McDonald's when he was 16 at college. Keen to earn money. Yeah, good lad. You're right, a job is a job and you should be proud of yourself, whatever you're doing. I, I absolutely agree with that. A job is a job. Well, there we are, boys and girls. I'm going to disappear now. Thank you very, very much for uh, watching and listening to the show. If you've never written in before, please feel free to do so. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk and I'll be very happy to read your email out on the next show. OK, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Don't forget you can subscribe to the videos by going to youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. You'll see a subscribe button somewhere on there. Just hit that and you'll also see all the old videos there as well, boys and girls. If you'd like to join us live on Saturday afternoons at 12 o'clock midday, it's 12 o'clock UK time, then it'd be lovely to have you along. To find the link to that, go to United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk right at the very top there it tells you where you can find us live on saturday afternoons at 12 o'clock all right time to disappear then boys and girls i'm hosting karaoke tonight if you're around the um uh hammersmith area i'll be hosting karaoke at the lorry arms shepherd's bush road in london so that's saturday the 8th of March, completely free entry, and it's a nice place. Starts at nine, finishes at one. So not too late for those of you that want to be in bed early, which I do. And of course, I'm off on Sundays now, so it's quite nice to have a, a day off Sundays. Um, thank you very much for watching and listening. Been a pleasure as always. You have a lovely Saturday. All right, see you soon. Bye bye. <laughs>